Good afternoon, and thank you for joining Camco Invest's virtual investors meeting. The meeting follows our six month uh, 2021 financial results that we announced last week on Wednesday, 11th of August, and it's in line with our efforts to enhance our transparency with our stakeholders, mainly shareholders, debt holders, as well as analysts. I'm Mustafa Zantut, Director of Marketing and Investor Relations, and joining me today are Mr. Faisal Sarfo, Chief Executive Officer, Mrs. Hana Taha, Chief Financial Officer. Although it's not a prerequisite or regulatory requirement, we have taken the initiative last year to start the analyst meeting. Uh, the first meeting was done following our Q1 and Q2 uh, financial results, which were impacted by the uh, coronavirus. And today we're meeting at times markets are recovering from the pandemic. Uh, should you have any uh, queries to ask during the uh, uh, presentation, you can just use the Q&A icon and we'll be more than happy to share it or answer it at the end of the uh, uh, presentation. Uh, Campo Invest is a regional non-banking financial powerhouse. We're independently managed subsidiary of Kiko Group. We are headquartered in Kuwait, regulated by Capital Market Authority and the Central Bank of Kuwait with offices in the UAE, Saudi, and Turkey. Turkey is a rep office. Our main line of businesses covers three main business sectors, asset management, investment banking, and brokerage. Today, we manage around $14.2 billion. And since inception, the investment banking activities have been involved in several transactions in various industries around, for around $26.2 billion uh, US dollars. As a company, we're well positioned to service uh, our clients. Thanks to the payment power we have, regional footprint, comprehensive offerings, the insight through our research, track record, the experienced professionals, as well as the client-driven approach. If we look at what happened during the past six months, we've seen that business activities gradually started coming back to normal. The expectations uh, of GCC economy to grow around 2.7% this year. There's a shift more into the non-oil sector. Uh, in addition, with the OPEC plus output cuts, it's expected to result in a faster growing in non-oil GDP from 3.5 versus the 1.6 growth in oil GDP. Uh, if we look at oil prices during the past six months, the first quarter they were up to 7.7%. Second quarter up 13% and the close the six month period at 55.7% up. Uh, the price we've seen prices reaching levels or 32 high level uh, month high level at around 77 uh, US dollars. If we look at the capital markets, equity capital markets, we've seen that most or main equity capital markets internationally has been in the green. Uh, the world index has been up 12.2%. The US up 14.4%, followed by uh, Europe 13.5%. If we look at the G MENA region and mainly in the GCC, again, also it was in the positive. We've seen the MSCI GCC up 22.6%. Uh, that was led by Abu Dhabi, which was up 35.5%, Saudi Arabia 26.4%, and Kuwait 15.2%. We'll move to weather to discuss the business and financial performance uh, during the uh, six month period. Weather. Thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. If you notice in our previous uh, quarterly reporting, we also mentioned uh, information about the pandemic uh, and how we've been dealing with it. We are still, of course, us and everybody in Kuwait, the region, the world is still dealing with the pandemic, uh, with some countries stating wave four, wave five, wave six. So it has been uh, still, it, ha it has been and still is to a certain extent uh, a tough uh, period of time where interruption uh, can happen to certain businesses. Uh, we at Camco Invest are uh, quite pleased and proud that we have continued during the entire period with interruption free uh, services achieving a number of accomplishments. If we look at the six months uh, period, the key accomplishments, 
from an equity side, our funds and uh, portfolios, managed uh, funds and portfolios continue to outperform respective benchmarks. Uh, during the year, we've uh, been awarded uh, for Camco Investment Fund, uh, KIF, has been uh, awarded their, uh, the, the Lipper uh, Fund Award for 2021 for the best equity over a period of five years and the best equity fund over a period of 10 years, which is a reflection of our continued uh, performance and approach to dealing with uh, funds under management. Uh, we look uh, more uh, close, which is six month period. Uh, we're very proud to have uh, uh, two funds leading the entire fund uh, space in Kuwait with the uh, KIF or Camco Investment Fund being the best performing conventional equity fund, achieving 22.27 uh, above the benchmark and above all its peers, all the, 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 the funds that are in the country. In addition, Al Durra Islamic Fund, which is a Sharia compliant fund, is also the best uh, performing Sharia compliant fund and actually uh, the highest uh, earning fund in, in the country with 22.79. So very proud of uh, what we've done on the equity side. In addition, during the period, of course, uh, we've had uh, from our pipeline uh, of, of uh, new products and initiatives, we've uh, introduced a leveraged fixed income product as well as a venture capital exciting new product that we believe uh, is suitable for the market. And, and these are things that we've introduced. Digitization, and of course, everybody's speaking about digitization. We launched uh, phase one of our digitization plan. Today, this is a plan that uh, we've been working on for some time and uh, we've, we've uh, launched the first phase of it. There are other phases that are coming up. Uh, part of the digitization, we launched ictetip.com, which is an online placement platform, uh, which, we, which we have used actually for IPOs and private placements uh, for, uh, in the market. During the period as well, we're very pleased to have uh, continued growing our real estate uh, activity. Uh, the acquisitions uh, totaled a value of $145 million US dollars during the period. Our special situations team, which is uh, quite focused on a certain mandate, uh, was successful in exiting uh, on, with several parties on behalf of clients. An example uh, mentioned here is, is the successful exit of an uh, associate level 24.5, a 24% uh, stake in Messiah Holding uh, during the period. The investment banking team, the IB team, also successfully closed a, a number of transactions. Uh, during the period, uh, five debt issuances were closed. Those debt issuances a total of 2.15 billion. And those we are pleased to say were not uh, just based in a single country, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Oman uh, primarily. In addition, uh, other uh, transactions, uh, redemption of 100 million subordinated uh, capital security, uh, rights issue uh, for, for a client for 7.1. And uh, as an advisor, uh, the MA side or the advisory side, we were very pleased to have. Uh, uh, done a number of acquisitions, namely here we, we highlight uh, uh, the acquisition for a client of a Kuwaiti insurance business and a Jordanian insurance business controlling stakes. Uh, our third pillar, of course, we mentioned the asset management uh, elements from our asset management side, investment banking side, and the third side, the brokerage side, Ula Wasata, which is Camco Invest's brokerage arm, continuing uh, to, to, to enhance its uh, positioning and market share attracting new clients with its online trading platforms continuously, successfully completing testing as, as more and more products uh, introduced. And really, you know, from the brokerage side, we would like to just uh, uh, highlight that this, uh, this, uh, this is also another potential area of growth as more and more products, uh, sophisticated products are being introduced by Borsa with the support of the regulators, the CMA. And we expect more and more to be flowing at the brokerage side. Last element, we don't mention much here, but from a regional perspective, of course, as uh, Mustafa mentioned, we've got uh, offices in, the, uh, in, in Saudi Arabia or companies in Saudi Arabia, uh, subsidiaries in Sa Saudi Arabia, UAE, and the rep office in, in, in Turkey. All these offices are actively working uh, in their jurisdiction and with us uh, in Kuwait and uh, we're, we're, we're seeing traction grow as we grow uh, the, the, the Camco uh, services and products across the region. And we're very happy with how this is being done. And uh, hopefully more and more will be seen uh, in that space. Uh, this is a simple chart uh, stating the assets under management of the organization. Of course, we're very proud to say uh, that we are in the top uh, 
uh, depending on, on what kind of review and analysis you look at, but we are at the top tier of asset managers in the region. Today, we are proudly in, in, in 2021 uh, at uh, 4.3 billion Kuwaiti dinars, which is 14.2 billion as of June. This is the highest that the company has achieved. As you can see the trajectory, the growth has been double digit over the years, starting from uh, the inception of the company in 98. Today, we stand at 14.2 billion US dollars, a compounded annual growth rate of 13.6 since inception. Uh, despite the different uh, activities, good and bad, or different events that have happened in, the, in, the, in this period, uh, the, being, you know, uh, we highlight two critical ones, which is the international financial crisis that happened in, in uh, 2008. And uh, another critical item we mentioned is, is, is the time that uh, Camco initiated the acquisition of a majority stake in Global Investment House and post that completing a merger to have Camco Invest, which today stands in, in the position it is in, which we will highlight some of the elements in, in, in the coming slides as well. L uh, looking at a glance, I'll, I'll just go through this slide and then hand over to my colleague Hana to go into more details. But uh, very quickly, our profits for the year 6.3 uh, million KD which is uh, above 18 uh, uh, fills uh, per share. Uh, the fee income, which is very important to mention that uh, it's been a period, as uh, Mustafa mentioned, where the markets have recovered a lot uh, and, and have grown significantly, which has impacted the entire sector. Uh, as, as we can see that a lot of the investment companies are achieving higher profitability than usual, significantly higher profitability than usual, and us included. However, we're very proud and, and happy to say that our quality income, and here we mention our fee income, uh, increased as well, uh, separate to the market, and it represents the majority of our uh, revenues in, in what we do. Naturally, uh, there has been uh, an increase in, in, in the GNA expenses, and uh, this, this has been uh, something, you know, maybe we'll highlight a little bit more on it, but it's a, a natural reflection with the increase of revenues. We still maintain our financial uh, focus and uh, in, in the sense of reducing our liabilities and making sure our cash is in a good position. So the tables reflect the six months 2020 to, to 2021, and you can see in, in all senses, has, it has been a positive increase where all the indicators from a, a, a profit and loss statement or a balance sheet have been uh, quite quite uh, positive and uh, this is an overview uh, i think hana can go into more details and of course maybe the q a will be more than happy to answer any questions on the financial performance of the company thank you Bubadir. Uh, for this slide, we uh, explain the income statement and the total income increased by 251.9% to reach 15.9 million KD. Fees remain the core of our income. Uh, if we look at the first graph, uh, the details of fee income. So during Q1, our fee income 3.4 million compared with 5.5 million for the same period of last year. Q2, we reach 5.3 million fee income uh, compared with 2.7 million. And for the six months, total fee income reached 8.6 compared with 8.3 million. For the total income, uh, during Q1, we reach 5.1 million, uh, 5.2 million for Q1, June 2021, uh, compared with 04 uh, million KD for 2020. And uh, during Q2, we reach 10. Point 8 million compared with 4.1 million and the total income 15.9 compared with 4.5 million uh, for six months in the 2020. If we look at the income statement, the major uh, uh, impact and change, uh, it is from the net gain from our financial assets. Uh, it was 0.8 million uh, loss last year. Uh, all loss recovered and also we got positive impact to uh, reach 4 million gain. Uh, the same for the, our share of result of associates from 2.2 million loss. We cover all the loss and again, we are in a positive uh, 1.8 million key. Uh, next slide. 
For the expenses side, general and administrative expenses increased by 21.6%. Uh, general and administrative expenses to fee income increased from 0 0.8 times in six months 2020 to 0.9 times in six months 2021. Reaching a net profit 6.3 million compared with a loss 3.9 million for six months in the, uh, 2020. Uh, it was 11.3 uh, fifths per share plus for uh, uh, six months ending 2020, reaching 18.4 uh, fifths per share uh, gain for 2021. Next one. For financial positions, uh, total assets increased by 4.3% from 118.7 million to 123.9 million as of June 2021. Cash and cash equivalent represented 25.9% of the total assets, reached 32 million KT. Total investment to assets, 53%. Uh, um, investment properties increased here from 716,000 to 11.4 million. Property and equipment decreased from 10.7 million to 1.3 million. This is the uh, major change here in the uh, assets. Next slide. Liability and equity total liabilities uh, reduced by 3.3% from uh, 64.8 million to 62.7 million. Also, loans uh, reduced by 27.6% from 6.9 million to 5 million. Owner's equity uh, stands at 57.3 million. It is up by 14.5% from 50 million to 57 million. Uh, also, return earning increased from 8.1 million to 13.1 million. Net debt to equity 0 0.23 uh, times compared with December, it was. Uh, 0 0.26 uh, times. Uh, credit rating by capital intelligence as of uh, May 2021 was a triple B long term and A3 short term uh, with a stable outlook. Thank you. Thank you, Amina. Uh, but the, the, there are a couple of questions that we've received from uh, investors. One of it is, uh, is the good performance reported mainly due to market uh, performance? Bubadir? Can you unmute, please? Sorry, I did not hear the first part. Uh, uh, they're asking about the good performance that we reported this uh, for the past six months. Were they mainly due to market performance? Well, uh, of course, uh, we mentioned the recurring uh, performance and the strength of that on the asset management side and the investment banking side. And uh, of course, uh, during this period, we've uh, generated, of course, incentive fees on the managed assets. We've launched uh, new products. We've generated fees on the real estate uh, side, uh, advised, uh, as, as mentioned, on a number of investment banking uh, deals that generated fees as well. In addition, of course, with the, the, uh, the growth in, this, in the trading activity and our uh, market share in the brokerage side also generated income there. So the, the combination of those has been an active uh, asset management, investment banking and brokerage positive period, which, which has contributed, of course, to the increase in the fee income. Thank you. Uh, another question is about the expenses during the first half. Why have we seen the, the, the increase in expenses? Uh, Anna? Uh, the cost is actually mainly associated with increase in revenue. For, we can say it's a natural increase. Okay. Uh, another one on the uh, significant incentive fees. Uh, it's mentioned that we've noted that a significant incentive fee of 1.2 million KD is earned during the quarter. May you please advise which funds generated this incentive fee during the quarter? Also, what's the threshold return to be generated on the funds for being eligible for this fee? Uh, the, I think, uh, and maybe Hannah can elaborate on this, but this is a, 
this is uh, more relating towards the transactional side rather than uh, fund side. Maybe a part of it is on the uh, uh, fund side, but uh, we've seen a trend uh, in the market where uh, incentive fees uh, have, uh, you know, um, uh, incentive fees have been impacted in some way downwards, pressure on it as uh, clients uh, squeeze uh, fees a little bit more. But depending on the strategies that are there, usually there are benchmarks. If you're exceeding a benchmark, you're exceeding a, a specific percentage. I, I think it, it varies from one product to the other. But uh, uh, doing good performance, exceeding benchmarks allows for, for, for th that kind of incentive. But in this case, uh, I, uh, and, and correct me, uh, Hannah, uh, it's more related to the special situations, uh, exits, and uh, certain of the of the other transactions that were undertaken. Exactly, this uh, performance from a special situation, and this is a, a very special man mandate. And uh, as per the agreement, if we uh, reach a, a certain percentage of our performance, we will realize that the incentive which we already booked it during the uh, queue. Uh, another question from another shareholder congratulating us for the results and the great leadership post the acquisition. And the question is, why do we have very high cash level on the balance sheet? It's almost 26% of total assets. And the recommendation is, is why don't uh, you pay this as special dividends to add value to shareholders and improve your financial returns, especially that rates on cash are very low. Uh, of course, uh, and Hannah can elaborate on this, the cash level, for, for various reasons, we are uh, maintaining a cash level. Uh, we, we have to keep in mind that there are transactions that we are undertaking that require us to fund those transactions and achieve revenue. So we are utilizing the cash as much as possible. Of course, having cash without the, 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 the reasonable returns is not advisable. We are also keeping an eye on the future as we delever the company. Uh, if we don't need the, the, the leverage for whatever reasons, we always have to maintain a healthy balance sheet. Keep in mind that we have a 40 million outstanding bond issuance, as well as uh, facilities right now of 5 million KD. So if we look at the banking and the debt uh, side, we're talking about 45 million KD. Uh, the cash as well, you have to keep in mind, is a consolidated basis. Uh, there is some of it that is required to be maintained in some of our subsidiaries. So if you, if you look at the brokerage side, it requires to have a specific uh, cash, capital adequacy. Uh, some of our regional uh, businesses also require the cash in their business. Of course, these are fully consolidated with us, with us being in all cases for those uh, over 90 percent. So the cash, uh, the cash is not just uh, uh, look should not just be looked at at the Camco level, but also a requirement at the subsidiary level. And of course, we are always keeping uh, an eye out. Uh, again, we still are in the COVID uh, space, and uh, we have to maintain um, a healthy balance sheet. And it's part of, of of maintaining a healthy balance sheet without impacting performance. And really, if you look, uh, you know, from a return on equity and a return on asset side, they're not mentioned there quite reasonable for, uh, for, for the level, for the structure of the balance sheet. No, no, Hannah, if you want to add anything else. Yeah, I, uh, no, I think uh, you explain everything about the, uh, about the cash uh, and we are using also for our trans transactions and uh, we generate revenue from that cash when we using for our, to support our products. And as you mentioned uh, in, in our branches in different countries, uh, also, they support their uh, their business, and they have also some restricted minimum of cash to uh, to keep it. Excellent, thank you. That's it with the questions. Do you have any closing remark, Bubadar, before we end up the session? Uh, th thank you. I don't want to take more of of, of, of your times, and uh, just to thank our, uh, of course, uh, board and uh, shareholders for the continued support. And uh, of course, you know, we take into consideration all our stakeholders. We, uh, as, 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 as the head of the executive team, we are, uh, uh, you know, very focused on having our executives deliver and uh, retaining and bringing in the best caliber to achieve the objectives for our shareholders, for our clients. And uh, really, uh, you know, I just want to say thank you to everyone for bearing with us. 2020 was a tough year, 2021 is a much better year as we can see and uh, we continue hopefully to perform and take care of our stakeholders as we 
we reach different milestones. Uh, and maybe I didn't answer the question, but uh, the history of the organization has always been to focus on uh, on on our on our uh, shareholders as well as our entire stakeholder base. So really, thank you and best wishes, and hopefully, you know, stay safe as as, as always, and hopefully, we will get out of this. Uh, uh, COVID situation and return back to normalcy and uh, growth and uh, uh, and hopefully see you in better times uh, in person as well where possible. Thank you, Weather. Thank, thank you, Hannah. Uh, with this, we thank come you. to the end of the virtual investors meeting. Uh, we thank you all for your participation. Uh, just to remind you that should you have any queries, you can visit our investor relations section on the Campo Invest website or drop us an email at investors at campoinvest.com. The presentation, the investor relations presentation, as well as the recorded, uh, will be uploaded on our website, and the recorded recording of this uh, uh, meeting will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. Thank you all. See you next quarter. Thank you.